Hello everybody. So in this video, we're going to look at some basic examples of how you use Rolle's theorem in a proof. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some examples here. So we're supposed to show that the function f of x, which is x cubed plus x, has at most one real root, okay? So I want to remind you okay, a root is a value, an x value, right? So that the function evaluated at that x value is zero, okay? So we are supposed to be showing that there's at most one value where this is zero, okay? Now, it's easy to see what that value is, okay? If you plug in x equals zero, that is a root of this function, okay? But we're supposed to show that there's not any others, okay? So we're going to start by saying, suppose there are two. Right, two real roots, I guess I should say. So by definition of what a root is, right, we know that f of a is zero, okay, and f of b is zero. Okay, so maybe more importantly, if we're looking at the hypotheses for Rolle's theorem, this means that f of a and f of b are equal. Okay, so now let's go ahead and check the other two hypotheses for Rolle's theorem, right? So is f continuous on the interval a, b? Okay, so f is a polynomial. This means it's continuous everywhere. Okay, and what that means for us is specifically it is continuous on AB. Right, so remember, it's not enough to say it's continuous. We want to be so specific and say that it's continuous on this closed interval AB. Okay. We also know 
that f of x, right, is differentiable, but let's be clear about how we know that. Okay. So f prime of x is 3x squared plus 1. which is a polynomial, right? It's a quadratic. So it is defined everywhere. Okay. We would say specifically, okay, f prime of x exists on the open interval a, b, okay? So what we would say then is by Rolle's theorem, There exists a C in AB so that F prime of C is equal to zero. Okay, so we showed that if we suppose that there are two real roots, A and B, then this function satisfies all of the conditions of Rolle's theorem, and we can conclude that there is some x value in the open interval AB where the derivative is zero, okay? But we know that f prime of x is 3x squared plus one, right? So this would mean that 3x squared plus 1 equals 0, right? Or x squared equals minus 1 third, which is not true for any real values of x. This is what's called a contradiction, okay? So we supposed that the thing we're trying to prove is true, okay? And then we've just shown that this leads to two things that are completely incompatible, right? We showed that there should be, by Rolle's theorem, a C so that F prime of C is zero, okay? but we also showed that f prime of x is not zero for any real value of x, okay? So this is, again, what's called a contradiction. Okay, and what that means is that you can conclude the opposite of what you assumed in the beginning, okay? So we assumed there are two real roots. We get something that obviously contradicts one another, right? F prime of C is zero, but then we don't have any solutions to F prime of C equals zero, okay? So there can't be two real roots. Make some room for myself. Okay.
This is an extremely common proof technique and you guys will definitely see it more in this class and in other classes, okay? So this is how the structure works, right? You assume the thing that you're trying to prove, okay? And then you show that there's two things happening that are completely incompatible. In this case, the thing that we have that's incompatible is that f prime of c should be zero. Um, but when we actually look for f prime of c, I'm sorry, this should be a c, right? If we actually look for this c value, we can see that this is false for any real number, right? A real number cannot square to a negative number. That means that we've arrived at a contradiction, right? Two things that contradict one another. And what we assumed, which is that there are two real roots, must actually be false. So we can conclude that there are not two real roots. Okay, let's go ahead and look at another similar example. So we've got this equation x cubed minus 15x plus r, and r is a constant, okay? Now we want to show that this equation has at most one solution in the interval negative 2 to 2, okay? So we're going to try to use this same contradiction method that we used in the last example. The first thing I'm going to do before I even set my contradiction up is give our left side of our equation a function name, okay? So f of x is going to be x cubed minus 15x plus r, okay? And then we're going to suppose that there's two solutions, right, a and b. Okay, then what we know is that f of a would be zero, right? And f of b would be zero, right? That's what it would mean for these to be a solution, right? If you plug them in, you should get the answer zero. Okay, more important than them each being zero would be the fact that they are the same. Right? The endpoints must be equal to one another for Rolle's theorem. Okay, And then we're going to check the other hypotheses of Rolle's theorem. Right? We're going to check that f is continuous. Okay, 
it is continuous everywhere, but we need to specifically mention what we're interested in. Right? We are interested in the closed interval negative 2 to 2. Okay? f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 15, which is also a polynomial. So specifically, f prime of x exists on negative 2 to 2, okay? So now we have checked all of the hypotheses, right? We've checked that it's continuous, we've checked that it's differentiable, right? So it's continuous on the closed interval, it's differentiable on the open interval, and the value at the endpoints is equal, okay? So we can say by Rolle's theorem, there exists a C, so that f prime of c is equal to zero, okay? But what do we know about f prime of c, right? We know that f prime of c is equal to uh, 3c squared minus 15, okay? So if this is equal to zero, This would tell us that c squared is 5, right? Or c is plus or minus root 5, okay? Now this doesn't immediately seem like a contradiction, right? It's not like the other one where we said, well, there's no real roots to that. There are real roots to this, and it is possible, in fact it's true, that at these two c values, f prime of c is 0. Okay, the issue is that these c values are outside of negative 2 to 2. Okay, they don't fall in the interval that we're interested in. Okay, so let's make some room and write that out. Okay, so we're just going to leave that very last part. So these c values in the theorem, we can see that they're specifically supposed to be in that interval. And these are not in the interval negative 2 to 2, right? Root 5 is greater than 2. So these c values are outside of this interval. This is a contradiction. Okay. Remember, when there's a contradiction, it means the thing that you assumed to be true at the beginning is actually false, right? So we assumed there were two solutions in negative 2 to 2, okay? So we can conclude that there are not two solutions in negative 2 to 2. Okay. 
All right. So in the next video, we are going to move on and talk about the main portion of this section, which is the mean value theorem. So I will see you guys there.